Good, great greetings to you tonight. It's your girl, Key. I thought I would just go and do a live without a topic to do, actually. I don't have a topic to talk about, which is fine. I'm happy to take any questions, queries that you may have about your greatness, your genius, and ultimately the blocks that you feel are holding you back from becoming your greatest self. So, you know, often in life, you may have a dream, you may have aspirations that you want to achieve, but for whatever reason, hello, Latanya, I'm taking your questions about living your best life and how to become your greatest self. That may well be very difficult for you, challenging for you. And so one of the things that I'm always helping people, whether I'm coaching them or therapeutically working with someone, are what are the blocks internally? So what's holding you back here? And what are the environmental situations that also hamper you from taking the steps that you need to? Often, I believe that it's usually here. It starts in the mind because we got to start here. Yes, yes, Natanya, feeling the love. Give love, give love, give thanks. It's all about how to live your best life which is a little bit of a popular term but sometimes I have to engage with those terms in order to make the message resonate with people but ultimately for me what I've noticed about helping people is that we all usually we all have a dream or have had a dream inside of us and the challenges especially those of us from you know disadvantaged backgrounds where we've got a lot more challenges to overcome to bring the dream to fruition is how best you're able to do that. So in my view, one of the things that would be particularly helpful for anyone who has a dream or ambition is to begin to visualize. Secondly, it's probably because I'm showing off my new bookcase, is we also need to think about what we are reading what are you allowing into your mind? If you have a dream and a vision and it really stretches you and it takes you out of your comfort zone and it means that you defy low level expectations that have been put upon you either by society or you may be an underdog in your family, but yet there's this dream inside of you that never leaves you. And I do believe our dreams never leave us. Then how can you begin to take steps to begin to bring that to fruition? And one of the things I would encourage you to think about is visualization. Begin to visually imagine, do a vision board, bring that to life. But most importantly, you begin, you need to begin to think about what you allow into your mind's eye, what you allow in. So that means you need to do an audit of the media that you watch, the television, if you're the EastEnders, Coronation Street crew. That's OK. There's no judgment about that. But you have to start to consider how much time you invest in these TV programs. We also know Netflix binging is a massive issue because it often comes up in the therapy room again and again and again with people who are using their energy to consume, let's have it, programs like that rather than focusing our attention on the ten So it's our responsibility. As ever, you know I'm a massive advocate of taking self-responsibility, you have to take responsibility for the dream that you have. Would I say any dream is achievable? No, because you have to have a skill set. You know, you have to have a skill set. So for me, I don't know, if I wanted to have five clinics in central London as a psychotherapist, that's something I could do because I have the skill set. But if I wanted to be an athlete, I don't have that skill set. So that's highly unlikely to happen. However, what can happen if you choose to is you can make sacrifices and dedicate yourself to the dream. But that does require you develop the discipline. Discipline is crucial and discipline is fundamental. So if you find yourself, and I know lockdown can bring up a lot of these issues for people in terms of, you know, whether where our careers, our jobs how situations are looking. I know, you know, it can get people down. It gets people down. We have peaks and troughs. But what is the dream that you have for your life? What is the vision you have for your life? Because if you don't have a vision, a plan or, or something that you want to achieve, 
well, often what they say is other people will employ you to build their vision. And I'm sure that's not what you want for yourself. So what is something that you want to aspire to? And if, like myself, you've come from a disadvantaged background where, you know, there's a lot more hurdles to overcome. One of the things that has been fundamental to my journey was I began to start to read. Reading is important. I don't like reading. Well, fair enough, you don't like reading. Yet you can sit down and read phone though. You can sit down and read text. So, you know, I think it's also about you have to learn to take responsibility for yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day, but it is important for us to begin to, one, read, two, limit media, limit television, limit that stuff because it's not great for your greatness. Let's be having it. A lot of it is manipulation and mind control. We don't need that in our life. We're trying to live our best life. And lastly, can you begin to visualise the ambition that you want for yourself? It's your girl Key. I'm broadcasting now to the 1 million trillion followers because I got it like that if this is of interest to you and you want to understand more feel free to inbox your girl key I'm here to be of service and if you need a question if you have a question and you want me to answer any of your questions hello insight to marketing how are you my girl I love you you always bring me out you do you always bring me out I've gone out live I didn't have a topic so I was just flowing from the dome about the importance of having some sort of a dream, something to work towards, especially if you feel disempowered. Feeling disempowered, if you feel that you have no power, then we know that that is a recipe for uh, depression because depression feeds off of um, feeling disempowered about whatever situation you're in. Some level you feel a sense of disempoweredness. It's one of the things I help people to work out is where you feel disempowered and what you're going to do about it. Because as ever, no one ain't coming to save us. We need to remember that. And we need to never forget that. It's your girl, Key. I am a qualified psychotherapist in private practice. And I help a whole raft of people. Hello, always. L8, Amy, how are ya? I help a whole raft of people to understand how we get ourselves in some pickles and what we need to do about that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I will answer any question you have for the next five minutes. I've just done a live on Facebook about being a scapegoat, about truth tellers, how best you need to look after yourself. And that is off the back of the BLM movement because I don't think it's wise for people to be going into work and naming prejudice and discrimination because that could leave you very much well vulnerable. So we need to have the skill of discernment. Let's not just get caught up in the trend and all of a sudden now we want to go telling people about X, Y, Z because we know that people will use their power over us to diminish us. And we know that that is not great for our greatness because feeling disempowered, as I said before, is also lit. Is that stealth? Hello, stealth. I haven't heard from you in a while. I hope you're well. Feel free to call me if you want to. Reaching out to ya. Hey, hey, hey. It's your girl, Key. Good advice. Hey, you mean insight to marketing is the most prudent advice because people are being inspired with the hashtag BLM and they want to go up in workplace and speak in your truth. It no go so. It no go so. It no go so. It don't go so. It don't go so. It don't go so. You will leave yourself very vulnerable even if they have a diversity rep in the place. You need to be using the skills of discernment because if you start to name stuff, uh, then you are potentially vulnerable to being a scapegoat. And that's when people will use their power over you to squash you. So let's use wisdom here because, you know, hatred towards people of colour ain't nothing new. And, you know... Um, Some things I think it's best we accept and I think sometimes it's best we strategize to empower ourselves so people have less power over us to squash us because our skin is darker and our hair may be curly. Personal branding and reputation management is key for employees. It is, my dear friend, but people are getting gassed. Let's use the, you know, uh, uh, the urban vernacular. People are becoming gassed and putting themselves in vulnerable positions by naming truths 
And when you're a truth teller, there are consequences to that. And I know that all too well. So truth tellers often become scapegoats. And so don't believe the hype is what I would say to you. Use your skills of discernment and be wise. And you need to be thinking about your levels of power because if your you know people will use power to silence people and so a lack of discernment in that regard could leave you particularly vulnerable and leave people with power over you with a little smile on their face as they take utter delight in squashing you just simple wisdom here just simple wisdom just some tips for you to think about potentially and for you to apply it's your girl key just a quick live here what are we saying this is why i agree with you about being mindful as a business owner it's slightly different but depends on the individual totally agree with you i think you know what sis i think the principle of being mindful about truth telling is is actually a good life quality to have life will teach you anyway what i found particularly beneficial is to develop the skill of discernment or the British are known for being very good at this, which is using um, elaborated code to dress up where well, you don't really say it. You use such a, an extended vocabulary that, um, you know, people are sort of left curious. I do love using language in that way. I find it very interesting. I think it's a great command of language. Um, doesn't mean I necessarily like it if it's done to me, but I can still marvel at elaborated code. I hope that makes sense to you and it doesn't sound too cryptic, but elaborated code is very interesting. How, you know, and you see politicians do that all the time, don't really answer anything. Um, but it does require us to read through the lines. Is she girl key? It is getting dark and I haven't got a light on my bike and I need to ride home today because it's all about getting that summer body for the man of my dreams that I'm going to meet on the beach when I'm wearing my size eight bikini. Isn't that right? Insight to marketing. Yeah, we know how that will go. Anyway, it's your girl Key. I am here, qualified, trained psychotherapist, helping people to deal with their life dilemmas in order to overcome them so that they take proactive steps to becoming their greatest self. Joyous, hello, you have joined us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's your girl Key. Yeah, man, it's very true. Most definitely true. You know, developing the skills of discernment is fundamental for your well-being it's fundamental to your well-being just because you no 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 but you, even when they're inviting you to come say you say you be very wise about what you say because we don't want to be putting ourselves in situations where we end up getting squashed sometimes the skill of discernment is that you smile and nod we call that kiss the ass before you kick it kiss the ass before you kick it that's called the skill of discernment some of us don't know that you're going to get a little bit gassed by your little BLM and then you want to go sprouting off your mouth in the workplace about X, Y, Z. Be careful. Protect your neck. you got to protect your neck because that's your pay. And if they start messing with your pay, that's disempowering. And we don't want to be disempowered people. We want to be empowered people. Yes? So, wisdom. And if you need to, you know, vent, if you're peed off, you can voice note key drop it in my voice note and you get it off your chest but don't be going making yourself vulnerable in places of employment even when you see the discrimination be mindful are you mean friends discernment we must have discernment this has been here for years and we can always see these things through hierarchies we can see the hierarchy and how the hierarchy sits so you know even when you're being encouraged to be truthful be mindful, use your skill of discernment, skills of discernment, especially for my people who love to say it as it is, who like to keep it real, who don't mince words, be careful, protect the neck back, protect the neck back, that's your duty, because we also know that people will use what you've said to squash you, or people will deliberately target you, and that is not good for you. Yes, so we're all about the hashtag BLM movement. But for me personally, what I think is of the utmost importance is that we are mindful about the ways that we empower ourselves. Empowerment is fundamental. Man 
Morel, big up, big up, big up. If you've got any question, it's your girl key. I have any question related to psychology or why you can't get a man, why you find man that give you a problem, you know your girl key is the one to answer because it's no joke out here. And it was only today I was talking about, you know, how us empaths have to fix up because we can't just be loving and giving our love, 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 sir. So, you know, we've got to get wise about how we deal with people. Especially if you've got a good heart and a good nature. It's some dry out there. It's some dry out there. So you can't just be giving away your heart. You have to kind of be very conscious. We need to have a little kind of wisdom about how we operate in that domain. I had to let my boss know I'm a queen. She's a viper. I'm in our techno chat for now. I showed her our discrimination policy and make her do her thing. Be mindful, rude girl. You can show them discrimination policy. When they flick that on you, they can still find that angle. And they'll find all their friends in HR to back them up. So be careful of your power. Because remember, um, it will be regarded as aggressive, not assertive. So you have to exercise your wisdom. Um, even though they have these things in nice leather-bound um, folders, the they are often paper-based processes and don't really have any real meaning in in true in true life you can just see that when you look at the kind of hierarchy in many organizations so you have to be careful don't fall into that trap because often what will happen is people can then use that to then squash you that's probably why you'll never get no promotion and they just keep you at that level discernment skills of discernment and and the discrimination policies it's nothing but a leather bound folder um make her flip it's a matter of time before it boomerang boy i'm done looking now i'm tired morelle you're tired you give up i don't blame your sister it's it's serious out there there's some slim pickings but you know morelle we all have needs so you may have needs and the person may not be the man that you want for your life, but he may be somebody who, who is able to uh, scratch your itch. But us ladies, we have to be very mindful about who you let scratch your itch. Marlo Webster, how are you? It's your girl Key. I am here. I'm about to go home, but before I did, I thought I should do go live because I haven't been on of late because I just haven't been feeling it. And you know, if you're not feeling thick, well, for me, if I'm not feeling things, I don't do fake very well. So it's best I just not be inauthentic. We've touched on Black Lives Movement tonight. We've also touched on the importance of having a dream. We've touched on what you need to do to be begin to bring your dream to fruition. And I've also touched on, you know, we've also touched on employment and, you know, having conversations about discrimination at work but how we need to be very careful about having those discrimination talks at work because people can use their power. Don't fall into that trap where they want to have these open conversations about race and discrimination. Race is a very loaded topic and that is not to be handled by yourself because we know if you flip, if we get angry or we get vexed, as we may well do, because some things are vexating, um, you have to be careful that we don't fall into stereotypes. We don't want that because we don't want people to use their power over us and be like, oh, look at her, look at her, look at her, look how angry she is, look how angry she is. And you'll be like, I'm first being assertive, I'm being assertive, this ain't anger. Not good for your sister. Use your skill of discernment. Don't fall into people, them trap. Can't do the non-emotional link up. It's not good for the soul. Sister, sister, I am so glad you said that because you have to honour your truth. And I think we are living in some serious time when they want to bang, bang and dash down. And if bang, bang, dash down doesn't work for you, no little romance, no little serenade, no meet family, no gift at Christmas, no birthday, no inclusion, no upgradation, just a dead grind. Rude girl, it's best you stay one away by yourself because you have some good love to give. Well done to you. Don't accept the nonsense. And this is another reason why enough of us ladies got a whole mental health problem. Because the man's situation is mashing us off. You're loving too much, giving too much, saying yes, 
not putting down no T's and C's, letting him run your show, often in your yard, and it's causing you a whole heap of stress. Rude girl, take back your power. Don't let them mad you. Um, Keely, one, ke oh, stay true and authentic. You know that, Marlo, I had to be real about that. Like, if I'm not feeling it, I'm just not feeling it, and I honour that within myself. Plus, as we know, like, you know, I've not had any holidays this year, as everybody else is in the same boat, so I just kept, kept on going. So I have to be, you know, particularly mindful of that. Happy to take any questions you may have before I jump off, but it's been a pleasure. We've been talking about Black Lives Movement. We've been talking about the importance of discernment. That means don't be running up in your job talking about discrimination and racism and prejudice that is not wisdom that is not wise don't get gassed it's still the same order yeah use your skills of discernment learn how to empower yourself so you have different choices often i know when i was in certain roles i wasn't educated so i didn't have choices when I was working at Ikea, I was an uneducated individual, left school with no GCSEs and some of the advice, which was don't come back. So what I'm saying to you is, you know, I used to fret I'd lose my job there. And then obviously I'd be going to get another shop job. So I had to be, you know, you know, I was in a, I think I was in a very vulnerable position. Education has enabled me to be empowered. And so what I'm saying to you is don't go running off your mouth at work about race prejudice, the fact that certain types of people get these positions above you because you could leave yourself vulnerable. I'm going to just keep it real because I ain't got time to like pretend that it's real because it's, it's not, it's just, it's on trend. It's on trend and then next month something else will be on trend and so we have to be wise because we got financial commitments that we need and we don't need the stress when people start to squash our power because they didn't like an uncomfortable truth that we had to tell them who's this um yes that's why i tell my kids to kill people with kindness they look at your color and expect you to be full of attitude and aggression but you kill them with kindness it shocks the haters yeah kill them with kindness yeah but you know what i found because i did that for a while as well um, killing them with kindness is a, is a beautiful way to be because it means you don't feed into stereotypes but I think one of the challenges if you're trying to avert yourself from being the, an angry black female for example is one stereotype is is that actually the, the lunacy of it is if you are offended and you are angry because you've been disrespected then you are in a double bind because you can't even express your anger because then you're then concerned that that person will see you as the angry black female. So then you feel anger and rage, but you can't express it because you don't want to fall into the stereotype. So then you swallow that down. That's the challenge when actually, you know, killing with kindness has its limitations, especially if people are being downright disrespectful and discriminatory towards you and you've done a little assessment and as long as you're fairly you know okay you've you've looked at all the other factors it could be and you're left thinking you know what the only reason you're being off with me is likely because of the color of my skin yeah so killing them with kindness can actually be very difficult when you may naturally feel offended by someone who is being discriminatory towards you so there's a benefit to that no two ways about it killing with kindness you don't feed into stereotypes but there's also a shadow side to that when people are offensive towards you and in, and you've worked out it can't be anything else and then you're still skin and teeth with them because you know so we have to be wise about killing people with kindness you know it's a real double bind but you know it's the reality of the situation we know this from morning anyhow as long as you're woke about you know the realities of situation this is not new to us um it ain't new it ain't new the challenge is about the power educate who's that savior savior boys education is power education gives you choices in terms of your capacity to be able to earn an income you know, so I can think about that when I was at Ikea, no qualification, no GCSE. I didn't have very many options. The more I've educated myself, 
it means that I have a, a whole raft of different solutions to employment, which is one of the reasons why I am self-employed. It's your girl Key. I am about to go home. I'm happy to take any question. Is it my responsibility to check white colleagues about saying the N-word? <laughs> In what context are they saying the N-word? That, that's what I would like to know, Neeks. In what context is the N-word coming up? Because that, that one's always a challenge, isn't it? If he's singing a song called... Um, and the title is with the N-word, someone's singing that, well... <sighs> context is helpful. Context is helpful context is helpful so I'd need to understand the context that that is it my responsibility thank you sister bless you love ya love you Marlo in songs to check white colleagues about saying the n-word my sister I think the challenge is if I think oh that is a good one when singing so oh that is a very good one I I, I would have to throw that out to everybody else like I'd need a comment on that um, Meeks, Neeks is asking, is it her responsibility to check white colleagues about saying the N-word when they're singing the N-word in a rap song, for example? So should they say that? I think, I think for me personally, just thinking about that, I would, I would, if it was me, I'd be thinking about my energy and whether it's the best use of my energy to expel on white people who are singing about the n-word because they're there i presume it's coming from a song sung by a black male i'm assuming i don't know so there's a lot because even cardi b was getting stick about her use of the n-word and whether it was appropriate for her to be using that it's not a word i use it's not a word in my vocabulary i i'm not all about that empower myself by using a derogatory term doesn't sit well with my spirit um and i think you know you have to you, if i you know what neeks i'll be thinking about your energy everything is energy sister and you have to focus on is that a good use of my energy my my thinking would be if it depletes and takes you on some war path that you are never going to change then be mindful because remember not all the brothers in the music industry have got a good head about them. They should not say the N-word in front of black people. No, they shouldn't. But you could give them the mama's look, even if it's in a song. Boy, boy, I don't know. It reminds me of the film White Chicks, where they kind of paused and wasn't too sure about whether they should say, I don't know what song it was. Yeah, it was a rap song about my, and they, they paused and then the white chicks were singing the song because obviously they were black. That film has actually got lots of levels in it, worth dissecting, but that's probably for me and my psychology friends. But the levels in that film were very interesting in terms of race and dynamics. I don't know if I'd go there, only because my head would be thinking about my energy and the fact that you're then going to get into an argument about that person who's saying, yeah, but if the black person is calling themselves an N-word and I want to sing the song, then I'm not really saying it, am I? You're going to get into like a fruitless debate, I would suggest, that you, you'd have to think about what do you hope to get out of having that conversation with those people? What is your outcome? What do you think will happen if, if it's just going to be uh, like... Be careful, be careful because you could open up something. The next thing they might tell you about this, black, this, and black, black, that, and this, not good for you. It could open up a can of worms. I I would potentially, it depends if it's in the workplace, Moniques, I would raise it, depending on the workplace, to say, I personally find that music offensive. You will within your rights to do that. That's the beauty of work that there is, or should be, let's say it. A framework for you to work in and amongst so if it was in the workplace I would raise that as an issue and that I'm not comfortable with that music as a human being and that I find it unhelpful but if it was I would choose 
outside of the workplace, I would choose my skill of discernment before I had any argument with that. Because race debates can get heated big time. I know I'm highly emotional, so it's best I'll stay far because I will I don't want to flip. I need to keep my power. What I say about energy, me as a black woman will be triggered if they say you see what I'm saying, sister? If they say the wrong thing and if they start going into well black people call them and then you start defending that or then you let it let energy. Everything is energy. Everything is energy. I always think about that when I think about the fact that I'm self-employed, I have this building. I see this as a building that came because before I used to channel my energy into relationships and, you know, trying to make the bad man good. We don't do that anymore. I channeled the energy into studying and here I am now, an empowered woman who works for herself. So I would encourage you to think about your, you know, your energy and whether that energy could be expelled somewhere else for something far more creative, fruitful, productive. Because some of them are deliberately playing that to provoke you would be my assumption. What? Well, that's an assumption. D, the queen, how are you? We need to go bike riding. I got my bike today. I got a ride back. I might get a train. It's getting dark. I don't have a light. If you're going to be triggered, don't say anything. That's right, Rosé. Because it's about retaining your power. It's one of the reasons why I've not commented on the whole Black Lives Movement either way. I mean, I have today, but generally, well, I don't jump on bandwagons. But, you know, I think discernment is of the utmost importance. Because you have to protect your energy. Because remember, when we flip, yeah, when we flip, everyone notices the flipping. No one's interested in why or what they said or how we were offended all they notice is the anger outburst. And to some degree, that's, that is it's a powerful energy. Anger is a powerful energy, but it means we've lost our power and we've fed into their hands. And of course, this is highly emotive. This is our friends, our families, our cousins, our brothers, our men, our fathers. Of course it is. This is our people. This is our culture. This is who we be. This is about power and dominance and control and how a set of people. Listen, I don't even start that one. That's not for the online airways. We keep that one for the one-to-one -one Rastaman vibrations when we're reasoning about life and liberties and the way the system is made. Yes, sister Sonique's my sis. I would encourage you, check your frequency, check your energy. No matter met them, take it from you. Don't let them take it from you, you know, don't let them take it from you. So, like I said, if it's workplace, you are well within your rights to raise your concerns. Just be mindful, skills of discernment. If that is an issue for you, inbox your girl key and we can just have a little conversation about that. I may be able to give you a few tips. OK, I better go home. I got a ride tonight because I need the liquid energy, you know what I'm saying? You don't want the liquid summer to come back and I'm there back in a size 28 again. Them days are over. It's all about a size 8 one day, huh? Size 8, size 8 crew. Big up the flat belly massive. All right, it's your girl Key, psychotherapist based here at Key for Change, helping people to understand their life dilemmas and helping them to think about what are the ways that they can move forward. Remember, you are responsible for you. Nobody coming to save you. I tell you again, nobody coming to save you. You have to protect your own net back. Use skills of discernment. Don't take the bait. You tell them we want to take long haul flights. We don't take bait. We are not fish. <laughs> All the best. Any issues, anything that's come up that speaks to you in Boxing Girl Key. Take care of you because if you don't,